It is an honor to uh, be back to the LBJ Library. Last time I was here, I introduced my mother, <laughs> which is a pretty tough task. <laughs> you know, I'm impressed by the new renovations, Mark. I want to thank you for showing them to me. And former presidents uh, compare their libraries the way other men may compare their, well, <laughs> just wondering how LBJ would have handled that. <laughs> He's a funny guy at times. Uh, the, uh, the president today quoted one of my favorite LBJ lines when he said, if one morning, he said, I walked on the water across the Potomac River, the headline that afternoon would read, the president cannot swim. The real influence of a president is not found in the headlines. It can only be judged with time. And at the distance of a half a century, we know with complete certainty that America is a more just and generous country because LBJ set his mind and will to the cause of civil rights. I'm honored to be here, and so is Laura. Thank you all for having us. Mark, you're doing a yeah. You don't need to get carried away. Anyway, uh, uh, I'm thrilled to be here with the Johnson family. Thank you all very much for your hospitality. Uh, Linda and Lucy, it's, uh, we're members of the sibling club. I, uh, and Bill Powers, the president of UT, greeted us. Um, thank you, for, Bill, for your service here to the University of Texas. Uh, David Ferriero is here, the archivist. Um, Margaret Spellings, Secretary of Education, when I was fortunate to be president, is, I know she's here somewhere. Uh, yeah. Not that great a seat, but it's. Uh, <laughs> you're important to me as the. Uh, yeah. After all, she is the head of the uh, George W. Bush Presidential Center. <laughs> the Civil Rights Movement required the spiritual and moral leadership of Reverend Martin Luther King, Jr. It required the courage and sacrifice of protesters who walked toward water hoses and dogs and police batons. But in the end, it also required a legislative strategist of uncommon determination and skill to translate the demands of conscience into the words of law. Within days of John F. Kennedy's murder, the new president decided that his first order of business would be civil rights. He would turn a nation's grief toward a great national purpose. In fighting for the Civil Rights Act of 1964, President Lyndon Johnson called the party of Lincoln to its best traditions. He called on his fellow Southerners to lay down the heavy burdens of their past. He affirmed the essential role of the federal government when other levels of government fail in their primary duties. He made one principle clear for all time. A segregated society can never be a successful society because the only success worth having is achieved together.